to this guy, visualizing capture skier motion in a VR ski training simulation. The paper is by uh, Erwin Wu from Tokyo Institute of Technology, Florian Partender from the Interaction Lab, and um, Hideki Koike, uh, from also from School of Computing Technical Institute of Technology, Takayuki Nozawa, and it will be presented by Erwin Wu, who is a PhD student at the Tokyo Institute of Technology. Erwin. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Erwin Wu from the Tokyo Institute of Technology again, and I'm also the guy in the middle and the guy over here on the ski simulator. Okay, before we start, I'd like to appreciate the co -authors. Uh Yeah, again, the pro program, Bernardo and Takeuki Nozawa, together with our professor, Hide uh, Hideki Koike, for their help. Also, great thanks will be given to the JSD Crest for their financial support. Well, our topic is uh, visualizing captured skier motion in VR ski training simulator. Okay, so the keyword for today is virtual ski. Uh, what I want you to remember as a take home message is of my presentation is that how to visualize helpful information for skiing, uh, for ski training in VR. Well, let's first introduce why we have to do ski in VR. As we may know, skiing has been a popular winter sport. Well, I'm from Germany, so different from Australia here, uh, it's winter now. Uh, exactly in this period, we guys go uh, start heading to the Alps and enjoy skiing. Uh, what I want to say is skiing has a strong environmental dependencies, uh, the three S. Uh, we need uh, snow, slope, and skis are required for skiing, which means uh, unless you can afford a uh, to travel to another hemisphere like me now. Uh, otherwise, normally there's a limit time for you to ski. Also, teaching ski is very difficult because it, it's almost impossible to follow an experienced skier. So the learner cannot simply copy the teacher's motion uh, from behind. What's more, during skiing, uh, different from other sports, you can hardly observe yourself's motion since you have to concentrate to the front. Under this situation, uh, some ski simulators were developed for indoor ski training. Uh, Arashin et al. used a projector to provide 3D perception on a motor-based motion ski simulator, while Panisola et al. studied the effect of using large slope ski simulator for ski training. In their study, uh, they also used EMG sensors and tried to find out the difference of muscle status between real ski and uh, simulator. However, uh, even even though the even if the simulator can perform like real ski, learning uh, ski skill require more visual cues such as a coach in front to tell you what to do. So, how to provide helpful instruction on ski simulators is our task. Well, to solve this problem, applying VR technology to ski has been uh, proved useful by some commercial products. Uh, one most important reason is that putting an HMD on <coughs> is more natural in skiing because uh, the athletes always have to wear a Goku. Also, for a similar reason, we could, we could put more fabric and technology such as motion capture or trackers on the body. At last, obviously, uh, VR can provide better 3D perception for an immersive experience. So there are a lot of use cases for mixed reality sports training. Chan et al. introduced the VR dance training by showing the capture motion of user on the wall to compare with the teacher. Mm -hmm. While Ikeda et al. proposed a golf training system using Microsoft HoloLens to overlay the teacher's body on the user. And future posts, one of our former work visualized the predicted future posts to help martial arts training in VR. All these works shows that it is helpful to have a reference to mimic when learning sports. Well, using ski simulators and VR can solve the problem of environmental dependency and lack of 3D uh, perceptions. However, as mentioned before, skiing is still very uh, hard to learn due to the difficulty uh, of getting feedback and not able to directly follow an expert. So one of our approach is to capture the motion of a teacher and using some uh, visual cues to provide feedback for VR ski training. So first to conclude, in this study, we want to introduce different visualization of a captured leading skier for VR ski training and study their effect. So first, we need to collect data from experts. Uh, we recorded the motion of two former World Cup athletes on a SkyTech ski simulator using 8 of the track mode cap camera. 
Uh, just to notice, the simulator here we use is a high-end version, which is a, a motor-based motion ski simulator, which is different from the one we use in the system implementation. And this is our uh, hardware and construction. We use a pro-ski power simulator, which is a rubber-based uh, physical motion simulator, which only has three DOF, uh, as shown in the figure here, the red, the blue, and the green one. And we didn't use the motor-based simulator in this study for some safety reason, and also, yeah, but the visualization method itself can be applied to any types of simulate ski simulators. So here's the total uh, work workflow. We use uh, HTC Vive Pro as uh, HMD and two Vive trackers was attached on the skis on the simulators uh, to track the ankle rotation to control the skis in VR. User will follow the expert in the virtual slope and try to mimic the motion of the expert. Uh, the visualization of the angle difference and the expert motion will be shown on the HMD. So till here, I explained why we are doing VR ski training and why help for visualization is required in skiing. So the next question is, what kind of visualization should we present? Shall we show as much as in information as possible or just simply showing uh, leading coach motion? So to, run, uh, to answer this question, two studies were performed. First, we built a prototype system and showed three different visualizations. Uh, the follow the pro and the graph feedback and the post breakdown. All three visualization was tested in a demo session of another VR related conference. So in this com <coughs> sorry, in the demo session, four condition including the three mentioned method and the free ski, uh, free ski condition only showing the scenery. The first one was compared and the follow the pro condition only show the captured motion of the expert's ear. The graph condition will provide feedback to show your feed angle comparing with the export expert, the oh sorry, the third one. And last uh, and uh, the two graphs is refers to the left feet and the uh, left foot and the right foot angles respectively. And last, the post breakdown condition is making some temporal after image of the coach to let the user uh, catch up with the each post. So in the study, a questionnaire was given to the 81 participants in the demo session. And after the experience, all the four conditions. So before the study, we made three hypotheses that we can test in our evaluation. First, uh, leading scale is helpful for supporting the user to ski than free ski condition. And the second, uh, providing a graph telling the anchor rotation is useful feedback then that can improve the, uh, the learning. Last one is that we believe that the temporal information is as important as spatial information, which was provided in the post, uh, post breakdown uh, condition. So, well, let's see the result of the questionnaire. Uh, five question was asked in a six point scale uh, to study the, the three hypotheses. The question one is asking, the, did you ski well in this scene? The question two is asking, uh, did you understand how to improve yourself? And question three is whether the UI information is easy to understand. And question four is asking whether the system is helpful for learning ski. And last, the question five is asking the overall impression. So first, for hypothesis one, whether a leading skier is helpful can be told from all the five questions that the result uh, of the following, follow, following expert was statically significant with regard to the free ski scene, especially in Q2 and Q4, which means uh, following an expert is significantly better than the base condition. Also in Q5, the overall impression of the flow follow the pro has gained an 82.7% positive response, the green part, which is greatly higher than all other conditions. So next, uh, the, con uh, the graph condition is designed for providing visual feedback. However, from the result, uh, even though the graph is, the condition is significantly better than the uh, free ski based condition, but it wasn't superior to the follow the pro condition. 
different from our expectation. Uh, in Q2 and Q4, the graph condition has the worst percentage of positive response. So one assumption is that the graph condition has too much information, which might be difficult to understand. It can be told from the uh, question three, whether the user understands the uh, UI information in which the graph condition has the highest negative response. Last, the post breakdown aims to provide better instruction of what posts users are expected to take for each turn. When we compare the post breakdown condition with the follow the flow condition, we can find out that the results are mixed. So in Q2 and Q4, the post breakdown has almost the same positive uh, response, but there are more extreme response uh, to side, as you can see, and both in the positive and in negative. So, which means the post breakdown has more extreme effect in helping skiing. And the overall impression of post breakdown is worse than the follow the pro condition. So let's first summarize the result of the first study. Uh, a captured leading ski uh, motion is definitely helpful for learning ski in VR according to our result. However, the graph feedback might be too difficult to understand during skiing. According to the interview taken after the study, uh, some users uh, prefer more simple and intuitive, intuitive uh, visualizations. The post breakdown condition shows that the both temporal and spatial information is in important, but the effect goes to extreme. So also from the interview, we learned that the most people who dislike the post breakdown because the after ghost is too scaring and annoying. So based on the result of the study one, we want to conduct a and another quantitative evaluation, we improved the system and designed three new functions here uh, for the evaluation. According to this, uh, some su suggestion from the participants of the first study that the process breakdown is too invasive, we designed a ribbon-like trail function, the left one, which is a more natural solution to show both the temporal position of the expert and also the rotation of the feet. So another idea is to place the after ghost on the ground, the second one, and make it a shadow-like rendering. So, and since the graph, and uh, since the graph condition was also complained too informative to understand, we also simply make the trail condition to be colored, the third one, uh, to uh, to be colored to accord, according to the difference of the ankle rotation. So it will be green if the ankle is almost the same, if it will become red if it's, there's a big difference. So it's aiming to provide a more intuitive feedback. So using the three new condition, together with the three improved old, uh, old condition, this time we performed the quantitative evaluation to answer the following research question. First one, what visual cues improve the performance most? And the second one is what is the effect of the feedback on the performance? So from the result, this is the result of the average error of the anchor rotation in each condition. From the result, we can see that um, the trail condition performed the best with an average error of less than 20 degree, which is slightly better than the shadow condition. However, both new conditions are greatly better than the post breakdown condition. And in the two conditions with feedback, we were surprised that the feedback do not have obvious effect on improving performance. Even though the color trail performs better, uh, performs better than the graph, we cannot say it's significantly better than the base condition. So let's summarize it. In this work, we present a VR-based ski simulator that provides the user with an immersive skiing experience and helps to overcome the environment restriction of open skiing training. We examine six different ways to visualize experts' movement to support the training, and two study was performed uh, were performed to qualitatively, also quantitatively, to find out the effect of visualization and the effect of feedback. And the result is that uh, our system, in our system, mimicking the motion of the expert directly leads to the best performance. And among other additional visualization, the trail visualization, which is rendered as a ribbon to also show the anchor rotation, shows promising performance. Lastly, lastly, the evaluation also indicates that the providing feedback during the practice is not necessarily improving the performance of the user, which is quite a surprise to us. 
Well, that's all for today's presentation. Thanks so much for your attention. If you have any questions, yeah, just ask me at the panel.